Hey bio fans! Anya here from the Biography Wrap and today, we are going to explore the life of Bob Lussy through the movie Blue Code of Silence directed by Magnus Scatvold and Greg Malazzi. So, grab your seats and do watch out for spoilers. The story begins with different contemplations of Bob's act of ratting out his other police officers. Different people have different opinions about him. Some consider him a hero and someone who did right by the justice system, while others consider him a traitor and criminal, who instead of going to jail and being prosecuted, has gotten famous and made money off of his actions. Bob's story begins way before he became a police officer. As a kid, he used to be the most loved child in the house. His mother adores him to another level. Since his childhood he has dreamt of becoming a police officer. There is a certain vibe about the profession that he can't seem to feel in other jobs. Due to his exceptional performance in his tests and trainings, he joins the New York Police Department as a police officer at the age of only 19 years old. His father was never fond of police officers, and that is why he wanted to do it more. In a very brief period of his duty as a cop, he becomes quite famous and known by everyone. Due to his charm and personality, he could get the information out of any suspects, and after his excellent progress, he was promoted to the narcotics division of NYPD. His time as a narcotics officer is spent making arrests and hunting down the drug trafficking system. Besides treating dealers in the same manner as criminals, he even treats addicts like criminals, and it's not just him, the entire department operates in the same manner. Gangs in the city find the police disturbing a lot in their business, and this makes them agitated to the point that they begin attacking and killing police officers. As the brutality against police officers has grown, no officer can trust anyone other than those within the department. Therefore, the Blue Code of Silence was created. Being a cop means looking out for the other cop, helping him out, and never putting him in danger. To fight this brutality and the drug network in the city, a special unit of extraordinary officers is formed, called the Special Investigation Unit, also known as SIU. SIU works its own cases with its own team and informants. Bob believes that the whole idea is like a celebrity officer and thus, desperately wants to be part of it. As a result, he keeps mailing letters to the SIU hoping to get a chance in the interviews. Finally, after perseverance for a short period of time, he gets his chance. To his surprise, he discovers quite a bit of resistance when he is appointed to the SIU for which he has been extremely excited all this time. He cannot find a partner, no one in the department is interested in working with him. As he asks around, someone tells him that at a crime scene, there are often large amounts of cash present, and officers take a few every now and then, but they are afraid he won't cooperate with their agreement, and so don't do business with him because it won't be profitable for them. It is hard to imagine how much money is involved in drug trafficking. Stacks and bundles of notes are often present at crime scenes, and the temptation to take some notes for personal use is not uncommon for officers, but Bob has never considered doing this as he believes it would be against the law. He and his partner get an order from their lieutenant to follow a possible major drug dealer. After many hours of following and interrogation, the lieutenant searches his car, but instead of any drugs, he finds bags filled with cash. When the whole team assembles there, the lieutenant suggests that since he doesn't have any drugs, they should take half the money and leave him with the other half. Bob knows that this is illegal and he wants to raise his voice and condemn the act, but cannot gather up the courage to do so and thus himself becomes a part of it. The Special Investigations Unit develops into a more gangster-like organization than even the gangs themselves or other police. Bob is aware that it's illegal and wrong, but now that he's accepted into the social group, he has a sense of belonging that he sincerely admires. Thus, he keeps getting involved in crimes and does not speak up because he fears it will ruin his friendships. In contrast, corruption in the police system comes to light when the biggest seizure of drugs by the police department is stolen from the property clerk and is returned to the streets among addicts. This defames the whole department and even the American justice system, leading to an intensive investigation of the entire department to eliminate corruption and officers involved with it. At home, Robert hosts a party for all his colleagues from SIU. 
His father is also present at the party, and he tells him after that his friends look more like gangsters than police officers, with their costly watches, clothes and cars and their views on the world. When he hears this, what he has been pressing down surfaces again, the guilt he feels for committing crimes and participating in them voluntarily. He gets depressed and wants to do something for the peace of his mind. The investigation to discover the causes of corruption in the police department is still in progress, but there are no significant developments in the case. However, at one point, a prosecutor contacts Bob, asking him if he would like to be involved in the investigation regarding the criminal justice system in the state of New York. He believes he has found the perfect opportunity to confess, which could give him the peace of mind he has been looking for. Upon meeting the prosecutor, he explains everything about the corruption. At this point he realizes that he, himself has been a part of many corruption cases, and in order to save himself from any further mess, he decides to voluntarily cooperate in the investigation as an undercover agent working for them in the disguise of a SIU officer. In an effort to find corrupt lawyers in the justice system, a false story of Bob having access to grand jury testimony is spread on the streets. Within days he receives a call from a private detective asking him for access to the testimony for one of his clients. In an attempt to catch the private investigator, he sets up a meeting with him and interviews him using a microphone hidden in his clothing. Getting his recordings prove really helpful to the investigators, and the lawyer involved in this is immediately prosecuted and debarred from the department. Over the course of the next two years, Bob gives information about all sorts of corruption activities in the narcotics division, and doing this even makes him feel good. He likes being a part of investigation and going undercover as some secret agent, something he had only fantasized about in his childhood. Since he knows that giving information about his partners would bring a lot of famous faces into question, as well as causing the breakup of his friendship and relationship with them, he has not told anyone about them yet. Even though Bob works as an undercover investigator for the investigators, a rumor spreads that Bob is actively involved with the detectives and keeps himself hooked up to hidden microphones at all times. At gunpoint, some of the officers put him in a car and drive him to an isolated location to search for a microphone. He could have been shot dead if they had found the mic, but a mafia guy who is present at the location and knows him very well somehow saves him. Though shaken to his core by this incident, he still stands by his decision not to divulge any information about his friends. When the investigation goes to the highest level and Galliani, the head of investigation department goes through these cases and people's lists with Bob, he immediately realizes that he is hiding something from him. After weeks and weeks of interrogation, he finally cracks Bob's blue coat of silence, making him confess to every detailed information of every member of SIU involving some of his closest friends which he was trying to protect so desperately from the beginning. With his confessions, almost all of the SIU officers are either indicted or sent to jail or fired from the police department except him. This leads to the shutdown of SIU department. Following the incident, Several of the indicted and fired officers decide to take revenge on Bob for destroying their lives and plan to kill him. Once Bob hears about this, he decides to go into witness protection for four years. But Bob himself isn't free of any crimes and people know that. The media knows this and hence he is being despised all over the country for not being prosecuted for his actions unlike his colleagues. The head of the investigation department, Gulliani, responds to the requests for prosecution by saying that Bob did not cooperate with the investigation because he was forced, but because he felt compelled to do so. In addition to bringing down the NYPD corruption system, he has contributed so much to the public that he cannot be prosecuted. So, he never serves a day in jail and is neither prosecuted. Nevertheless, he confesses to the crimes he was involved in. Bob's friend commits suicide the day before prosecution and when he hears the news, he feels devastated and unable to get over the fact that death may have been caused by him. After Bob retires from the police force, he approaches the famous author Robert Daly and asks him to write his story. Robert Daly agrees to do so, at Bob's request. He writes the book titled Prince of the City, which later on is turned into a movie. With this, Bob gets immense popularity almost as if he is a celebrity, 
but all this fame roots from the controversy that he is being falsely idolized as the hero when he is nothing more than a traitor and criminal himself. Even after his death, people continue to have their different opinions. Some consider him a hero, while others consider him a disgrace to the police force. But one thing is sure, that his actions have helped change the whole corruption scenario in a very good way. As a result of his efforts and cooperation, it has been possible to achieve zero tolerance for corruption within the NYPD, and thus, whistleblowers like Bob deserve recognition instead of being referred to as villains. That's it from the movie, Blue Code of Silence. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Let me know what you thought of this inspirational true story, and make sure to check out this next one.